So lastly is cameras. Um, now we've been asked so much about the Pocket Cinema camera, like I literally every interview I do with anyone now, they go, I want you to do an Ultra HD version of the Pocket Cinema camera. So we felt like this is not quite shipping yet, we didn't want to, normally we probably wouldn't want to talk about it, but the product is finished and we thought we didn't want to come to another NAB without answering the question, what are you going to do with Pocket Cinema camera, particularly when it's back there in the office, basically finished. We've really just got to run the manufacturing process now and get it, get it into production. Uh, but the, uh, obviously you've seen the poster on the front of the hall, um, so hang on a sec. And uh, so this is what it looks like. Um, you can see it's a very new design. It's completely, uh, but completely redesigned. There's really nothing much left of the old one. But we've used all the knowledge, everything that we've learned from the original pocket camera. Um, so for example, it's a uh, 60 frames a second 4K sensor. It can do Ultra HD at 60 frames a second as well. It'll do window HD at 120 frames a second. It's got 13 stops at dynamic range. Uh, so it's a pretty nice sensor. It's uh, four thirds size, so it doesn't have the crop factor problems. The other camera, the uh, other pocket camera, is a slightly smaller sensor, so this one fills out the micro four thirds lens mount really nicely. Uh, but the good thing is it's micro four thirds, so you can use all the lenses that you have. I mean, people actually often spend a lot more money on lenses than they do the camera, so you really want to keep that investment. We wanted to be able to. I mean, I've got lenses too. I'd like to use. Uh, the good thing is it's twenty five thousand six hundred ISO. It's got dual gain. Uh, I didn't get, this one thing I didn't get is the native ISOs for the digital gain rate, so I've got to, the guys will know that. Um, so you can see that's the dynamic range of various ISO settings. Um, the other thing is using version 4.0 of our color science. We had that in a broadcast, and we're going to be rolling it into some of the other cameras like the original uh, Micro Studio camera and the studio cameras and other things like that. So we've, this is the fourth generation of our color science, which uh, is generally built into DaVinci, so you don't really notice that it's being used. Uh, most other camera manufacturers have SDKs and they plug them in and they've got all the color science in there. We're the same. But we are breaking that out into a separate SDK because other software needs to get the color science as well. So, um, particularly the, even the film scanner, people want to be able to get access to the data. So we're going to be breaking that out into an SDK. Um, the body of the camera is a carbon fiber poly, um, polycarbonate composite. It's a new type of material. It's basically kind of a combination of polycarbonate and carbon fiber. So the cameras you see on the floor here are much heavier than the one, well not much heavier, but they are heavier than the ones that are, will be in production. They'll be lighter. Lightness was a huge thing with one of them as well. So we, yeah, it's a new material and it's, uh, it's, it's quite nice. It's a weird sort of material. That's where the battery goes. It's a sort of a Office 6 kind of style battery that goes in the bottom. And the, uh, you can see the front there, the multifunction controls. So what you have is um, the scroll wheel on the front does iris. And that, uh, you adjust the iris. And then if you... Enjoy the show. Uh, Again, a bad day, just keep talking. Um, then we've got white balance and shutter angle and ISO adjustments on the top side. So when you hold the camera, you realize quite what it's like. Um, you can feel uh, the controls, and it's really quite ergonomic. There are really three things that drove the design. We needed a very big screen, we wanted a lot of really good ergonomics on how you control it, but also we wanted to uh, make sure that it was really good audio. That was another really big key feature that we wanted on the camera. So also the other thing, I should go back, the other thing you notice is a record button on the front, is, um, so you can actually, you know, the philosophy on this camera was if Ursa is the camera that you go to shoot people with, this is the camera you often use to, to shoot yourself. And so often you've got a lot of people who set the camera up and they're doing a sub, like doing a, you know, an interview, and they're the camera person and the talent. So we, we're very mindful of people who actually need to shoot themselves. Um, it's running the Blackmagic Camera OS. So you've got a lot of cool features like, um, uh, camera presets, but it's also got 3D lights built in, and you can actually record the 3D lights, you can bake them into the file. Um, you've also got uh, camera settings and meter data and all the other stuff. It's basically an OSME Pro shrunk down into a small size. Uh, obviously with a different sensor. It's not as high end a sensor, but it's, um, it's uh, almost the same usability. And it's also got Bluetooth built in, so you can do so the same Bluetooth control as OSME Pro can do. You can use the same protocol and control to do this. Uh, now I'll talk about audio, we've got, done a lot of work on audio, there's four microphones on it, two microphones either side, so we can do a lot more with the audio and get a lot more better quality. You really want to be able to get great audio built into the camera without plugging a whole bunch of stuff on top if you can get away with it. Um, but at the same time you still can plug in microphones, it's got a mini XLR and it's got phantom power. So you can plug in a standard microphone and power it if you're doing interviews. Um, looking at the side you can see the rubber boots. Now what's interesting about the rubber boots, we learned some things also from the original cinema camera, when you move those rubber boots out of the way, they were kind of in the way. So what happens now, they're on a single point, so you can pull them out of the way and rotate them around. And you notice on the side, we've got a full-size HDMI connector, which was probably one of the most annoying things in the original pocket camera. 
We've got a um, microphone input for a normal uh, camera mic and a headphone socket. We've got a, the XLR connector, and then we've also got a camera style, a pro camera style, a two-pin power cut socket. So you can latch that in. But what you'll notice, you see there's a USB connector there. We can record um, directly to flash drive. So there's two cards inside. There's the SD card and CFast cards. You can, uh, it's also a UHS-2 card, the, um, the SD card slot but you can record straight to an external disk, like a flash drive. Um, so what I'll do is I'll bring the camera out. I think, uh, oh, here we go. Here's the camera. So you see I've got uh, media in it, and I've got it running, and there it is. Everyone looks really good, and I can record. So that's recording now. It's recording you guys, recording me. <laughs> <laughs> Which is pretty cool. Um, you can see you've got all the settings on the back. Uh, all there. But also, you've even got access to the high frame rate. So if I go push the high frame rate button, I can go to the high frame rate instantly from the back. So you're going to catch a match. And, but what's really cool is if I take the media out, so I'll take the media out so there's no media in it. And I've got a, I really wanted to show this. So on the side here is the USB C connection. I don't know if it's broken off. Um, if I plug that in, what happens is the media comes back up. I've got uh, 37 minutes on this drive. So now if I record, I'm recording the media disk, and that's working fine. I wave everyone. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting it. So what's interesting is if I, what I think is really powerful about that is if I record onto this disk, this is the disk that I can edit off. So if I take this disk back over to the machine over here, and plug it in, it'll mount on the computer. I'm actually recording to the, my, to my media disk. I'll go back to the edit timeline. Here's the uh, file. If I drag that down over here, this is you guys. So now, if I go to the color page, I can do a bit of color correction. And that's, that's you guys there. Scroll through. So I think it sort of that's a really nice feature from the point of view that you can record straight onto the media disk. You don't have to do a whole lot of card shuffling, and you don't need any external SSD record. You could use an SSD to USB to C adapter. I mean, it could even be a big disk array, but I mean, it'd be hard to take a portable camera with a disk array. So if we can switch back to the slides, but you can really see how powerful it is to be able to do that. That's an expansion port to be able to do other things, but for the moment we're using it to be able to record directly to hard disks. Uh, I think HFS Plus and uh, XFAT, I think, is the two formats we use. So I think it makes it a uh, pretty nice um, extra feature. So there's a, there's a bunch of things like that where it goes way beyond the original pocket camera. Um, so, of course, you know you can see some of the usage uh, cases here. You know, we've got three cameras in an interview situation here with a microphone plugged into one. So you can then go straight over to DaVinci's multicam and edit that footage together and you've got, because it's a small camera, you can now have more angles. And if one person can do this, you can have a one-person crew, you know, so I think it's, it's great for that kind of use. Um, obviously, we've got a lot of people. There's a still frame, uh, still photo button on the front. So people doing fashion shoots and some of these other things, there's a lot of behind the scenes stuff now. There's a lot of social media package that comes with a, a fashion shoot. You don't just have photos now, you've got all the social media package around that. This is what this camera can really do. It can get you the behind the scenes stuff. But also you can take still frames in the same color as the camera itself. So that can be really useful as well. One of the most requested features was actually still frame button on the pocket camera. The other thing you do is that's the blogger type situation where someone's doing their own uh, blog style uh, programs. It's a food program as an example here. Um, also high-end weddings, as you, know, you can put it on a gimbal. Um, it's, it's quite flexible from that point of view. Big screens, you, can, you need that big LCD to be able to focus in Ultra HD. That's why the, the screen's so big. But at the same time, you know, indie film is a huge area for these cameras. They are affordable so people can get into the TV industry through them. And you can got that big screen, so you can review back what you're doing, and see uh, with the crew. You, know, you can watch back on the back of the camera itself, and we we'll try to allow the camera to have as much in it, so you don't have to have a lot of rigging. But at the same time, you can rig it up. You can do all these kinds of gimbals and and stabilised platforms, and you can go off and hire big cinema lenses and bolt them on through adapters. You can still do that. It still has that capability of, of pimping it out to be as big as you possibly want it to be. So the uh, it'll be due in September. We're saying September because we want to be conservative. It'll be 1295. It's a little more money than the original pocket cinema camera. But what's great is it comes with DaVinci Resolve Studio. 
So that extra money is kind of like the, the DaVinci bit. So it kind of ends up being roughly the same price if you include the value of DaVinci Resolve Studio. So what you get is you get the camera and a full visual effects, editing, color correction, and a professional audio post-production solution all together. I don't see any other way. There's not much more we can do for people <laughs> to get them going and doing their own feature films and TV programming. But that's what it's all about, right? This is what we're here for. So that's pretty much it. Sorry I've run over run six minutes, but uh, for anyone who's watching the stream, we're actually streaming this. We're going to have uh, theater presentations online uh, after this. So if they bear with us, they'll be able to watch that. But for all you guys, again, I want to really thank you guys. The guys have worked so hard to get here to make this product. So you guys, without your support, we couldn't do it. So thank you very much. I really appreciate it.